This is your tape. Yeah, that is. Thank you. That's an extra one. Thank you. You left that over Yeah, I did. Why do you teach out at work? I teach journalism. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Oh, that's right, because I asked you about Mary Ford. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You. Yeah. I took a break. Did you? Good. Okay, we're about ready to ask you some questions about yourself and where you, where you were born and where you grew up and what kind of schools you went to and so forth. Well, that's one reason why I decided to get in, into politics and run for state office because of the diversity of my background. I was born in Emporia, grew up in Linden, married an Overbrook boy, um, live in Carbondale. I have a, a Carbondale address, so which really took in the whole district. Oh, well, that's interesting. What kind of a um, school system did you go to when you were first starting school? Um, well, London was a uh, 3A school, and then uh, I finished high school down in Emporia High, and uh, it was a 5A, I think, then. And then uh, didn't get into college until after we got back from this Navy, you know, California, and went to Washburn and took about 60 hours. I didn't didn't finish college. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, and gerontology was my oh. um, major. Yeah, that's great. Maybe you'll come back someday. I hope to. In fact, after going through that lawsuit, I really thought about becoming a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> good, good reason. <laughs> or a judge. <laughs> well, that's how you get, you have to to get a judge. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Lawyer first. Well, uh, tell me something about your family. Do you, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, I've got one brother and uh, four sisters, and, but then my father remarried, and so there was actually ten children in the household for uh, oh, quite a few years at home. Did, did any of your brothers and sisters' parents, did anybody help you campaign in your family members? Brother and uh, they were around yeah. there. Uh, well, in fact, one actually came back from Portland, Oregon, to campaign. She spent her two weeks vacation that oh, really? first year back with me, and I got pictures of election night, and it was really a family ordeal. Well, that's kind of nice. uh, an ordeal in yeah. your case. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> Even though was, you won, it was. Yeah. Did right. you ever get your um, celebration for your victory party over? Or? This time uh -huh. around, no. <laughs> we're still going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> haven't gotten the invitation sent yet. Okay, in your uh, high school, did you debate? Yes, yeah, did I was you in debate. debate? Uh -huh. Okay, uh, are took there any other activities that you think helped prepare you for that? Oh, I took speech class, um, and was in debate, and was in um, uh, music groups mm -hmm. where we, you know, I was in um, a chosen group, at, you know, in music mm -hmm. down in Emporia. Um, so performance yeah. type things. I was were. also a cheerleader in high school for mm -hmm. the three years at, at Linden. And um, I think the one thing that probably got to me the most was when I came up here on an eighth grade trip and I would never forget walking through those huge doors in the chambers and looking up at the board and seeing the names on it and just thinking, you know, it would really be neat to do really? this. This was an eighth grade. Uh -huh. This was an eighth grade. Tour thing. And I and I also remember the teacher telling us that any one of us could be the next president. I mean she was saying that, you know, you should always set your sights. Who was this teacher? Uh, Mrs. Hayes from Linden. She's still alive and she's in my community women's group. Is she really? What's her first name? Mildred. Mildred Hayes. Okay. H-A-Y-S. Uh -huh. That's interesting. But I think that that's the one thing I try to tell the kids, especially the pages and stuff, that uh, to, not, to, to not put it so unreachable. That, that this job, government democracy should be the little people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way you have to go about it. I think that's important. Oh, were there any organizations, even after you went out of school, that you belonged to or participated in that might have provided some people to help you with your campaign eventually and maybe encouraged you to run? Yeah. Um, I belonged the health Kansas Healthcare Association was I was a member of that and on the board and they helped quite a bit as far as um, uh, oh getting financial support. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I mentioned previously Cape. I wasn't a member of Cape, but they helped out a lot. Mm -hmm. um, civic organizations I belong to, um, I don't know what do you call them, Federated Women's Clubs, but was not an active member at that time. And, but you uh, had been before? Uh, uh, and, uh, or was that in London? No, that was in Overbrook. In Overbrook, yeah. okay. And then in London, I belong to BPW, which is Business and mm -hmm. Professional Club. Mm -hmm. uh, and did, they helped. Did they help too? In fact, my 88 election, I was one of the year. And it was the award occurred about a month before the election, which was so good publicity. Yeah. So we're trying to track down all the organizational connections right. that everybody had. Um, what was your occupation? As a health care administrator, adult care home administrator. Uh, did you have any other employment while you were in college or anything? Just that. Just that. Okay. A 40 hour job, I mean, yeah. 60 hour job a week yeah. to go to college. Well, you, but you stayed with the same work is what I kind of mean. How old were you when you were first Two. That's four years ago. I've been 33. Okay. Mm. No, 34. 35. 39 now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, how did your um, family accept this? You had children. Yeah, grown. One's 23 and the other one's 19. So the 19-year-old was still at home in yeah. high school. Yeah, oh, that was really tough, too. Um, but I vowed to try to make it to all, and they both were very wow. athletic uh, starters on the basketball team, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So, and I, I missed maybe one or two games. Mm -hmm that seemed to make a ton of um, My husband was not really for me getting into politics, but he also knew I was kind of at a, a dead-end situation with the, the job because I couldn't. I was an administrator. I couldn't go any higher. Mm. You'd have to buy, a, buy and be owners to go any higher. Mm -hmm. um, and I really couldn't do anything else because I didn't have a college degree. Mm. So I told him when I ran for office, I said, that if this is going to be like a four-year college degree in two years because of the context mm -hmm. that I'll have as mm -hmm. far as possible job prospects. So um, I took it on that. Mm -hmm. He, he ne never really got involved in campaign, although he, he did not uh, work against me. He, <laughs> well, that's, he was he yeah. was there behind the scenes. Well, not did, what does he do? What is his we have a lumber yard. He's so he's busy. I mean, yeah. Extremely. So like In fact, that's why it works out job. perfect because yeah. I usually get home and he's not home. He's still working on the yard. Now so you commute back and forth. Uh -huh. So Which you don't is, live in Topeka? No. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's... I mean, I would, Topeka's fine. It's, mm -hmm. I, you need to get that. away from, you need to get back into reality. Mm -hmm. And going home gets me back into reality. I don't see how these people do it. You know? I don't. Mm -hmm. And they live and breathe 24 hours of this stuff. And you, you've never done, I mean, you've never stayed up here even for a week. So no. you never know. Well, now, that probably was fairly important when your oh. son was still at home. Well, and if I did not have the, if we did not live as close to Topeka, I would not have run for office. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband was totally against me going mm -hmm. and being gone a week at a time and then coming back home. Well, that separation and uh, those husbands that allow their wives to do that, they're making great sacrifices, mm -hmm. and I think it's super. Mm -hmm. I so. see that. Okay. I'm so proud. Um, I've been trying what do you think, I think we've already talked about this, but just in case you can think of anything else, is there anything else you think that contributed to your ability to be successful as a legislator and to get elected and all that? Is there anything besides, I've talked about, we've talked about your occupation and the organizations and the debater. And is there any other parental influence? Uh, Niles is uh, definitely. The upbringing um, in a very, my mother died when I was 14. My father died when I was 21. Oh, okay. um, being very strong, my dad always said I had a fighting spirit. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly than that, it was the family structure with um, God first, you know, family second, mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Well, they ask you that question. Yeah. As a legislator, what do you think one of your major contributions is going to be? 
uh, to the student community. Maybe you feel differently about this 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 term than you did last term. Yeah, I think so. Um, what's sad is that the terms are so short. Two mm -hmm. years, you really don't accomplish mm -hmm. anything. And I do believe that there should be some type of a control on length of terms. Um, you know, I think anywhere around 12 years is plenty of time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, at the end of 12 years, if somebody's in leadership, it would be a shame mm -hmm. if they're a good leader to have to, to boot them out. Mm -hmm. um, you think it would be better for a four-year terms? And you I think it would be better for four-year terms with a limit of three terms mm -hmm. um, in, in one house. Now, mm -hmm. you could go into the Senate then after 12 years in the House or vice versa, being in the Senate and going back to the House. What about your, you mentioned earlier, uh, your uh, interest in changing the procedure for these contested seats and things? Yeah. We'd have to change the Constitution, mm -hmm. Kansas Constitution, to, um, to not have the legislature vote on it. That, I think, is what I heard the people say, was it was just ludicrous that the legislature mm -hmm. could turn around, the recount board, the judge's decisions, mm -hmm. the, the uh, uh, canvas, board of canvassers, you know, all of that. And, and yet it did happen in Congress. It, two years ago, uh, a uh, U.S. representative won by 150 votes, and it went to Congress, and they seated the other guy. And that seems it was in Indiana. My goodness. Yeah. And I really awful. worried that that's what was yeah. going to happen to me. Oh, yeah. And I felt like I was going to be punished. And there's no doubt that I was punished. Mm -hmm. and they kept trying to say it, when it wasn't partisan. But mm -hmm. just if you read the minutes from the select committee, mm -hmm. you know, see who said what, it was partisan. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's interesting <laughs> since you're kind of a history making person, too. Well, yeah. That, situation. But I don't know that it'll ever happen again. Mm -hmm. Although I do think with, what, 14 races within 100 votes this last election, it, it could really happen mm -hmm. again. It's really a lot of this, yeah. this election. Well, do you think that uh, the being in the legislature changed how other people treat you or see you or? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll go in stores down in the district and I don't know this person from Adam, and they know me. Um, and you, you, you know, it's hard to say, I don't remember your name, and you know, mm -hmm. so you try to make conversation that you know them. And that's 19,000 people that you're dealing yep. with. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know, I'll never forget going to the de car dealership here once to get something fixed, and the guy said, uh, Tell him I was running for the legislature, and he said, "He said, oh no." He said, "We put up with a lot of those people coming here and demand this and demand that, and they think they're all important." And that, you know, I hope that that's not ever mm. perceived by you know the public that I represent, because as far as I'm concerned, they're more important mm. than I am. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one way to prevent that from happening yeah. if you have that right. Do you think your family has sacrificed? So oh, yes. Be oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Besides meals, what kind of sacrifices? Well, number one, we haven't had a family vacation for who knows how long because Mother can't mm -hmm. afford to take vacation time. She has to take it campaigning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your, camp your vacations are campaigning. Um, they, you know, they have to, to put up with people griping about things, the way government works, mm -hmm. because they know that their mother or wife is in the legislature. Um, so it changes that aspect. You think it, does your husband feel like it affected his business in any way? <laughs> well, there was some positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, when I changed parties, we had at least one customer that we knew that came in and said he was no longer going to buy anything more. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. That happened. Um, so, you know, things like that. But mm -hmm. I think, on the other hand, he, it's probably been more positive mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the, the 
the status that comes mm -hmm. with your job. Well, just the knowledge of the name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, since you've been down here and probably had a little time to think of it, do you think that the political role of women or the expectations of other people as far as what women should do in politics, do you think that's changed? It's changing. It's changing. You think it's yeah. still in the process? How, what change have you seen in almost five years since you Well, that? the good old boy, good old boy quote system is eventually being eroded and it's being replaced with um, equal status now slowly and that's mm -hmm. still not the, the way it is. I mean it definitely Donald Whiteman and Joan Whiteman still have to you know, prove themselves more than a man has to. Um, in the same way with Wanda Fuller or um, I'm trying to think of the others at uh, Rochelle Conister. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, do you think that, uh, now, we have found in, just recently, in kind of analyzing some of the statistics here, there were never more than four women in the House prior to 1975. Mm -hmm. And ever since 1975, the number has been increasing by a percentage mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose that could be, ha why did it happen in 1975? Well, number one, Barbara, if you stop and look at the pay and what it takes to campaign, you either have to be a very wealthy person or you have to be somebody that's not the main breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see more women get into it because I, mean, I can't believe this year we've got three women expecting babies. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a, unheard of. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to know what other states, if, if I think Kansas is leading that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and it's... Now, are they expecting during the session? May. All so, I mean, of doing them. one of them in the morning. Yeah. Sheila's in May, in and, May? and Darlene's Good in May, night. and uh, I think Sheila's in May. I know Darlene and Susan are in May. Okay, that is a change. So if we have a long session, mm -hmm. we may have a delivery on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows, it may be long. Well, I believe Mary Reynolds was the only other one that I can think of, in, and she was in 78 or something like that. And she was expecting? Mm -hmm. I think she can't remember if she had the baby during the session or how it worked out. I remember her bringing the young baby to the... Have you interviewed them? Lisa Benlin or Susan, Susan Wagner? We haven't interviewed them. No, I think Sarah's interviewing them. We've split the list up. My first year, I think they're going through what I felt the first year was really whether the job was working. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, you're away from your family. Mm -hmm. You feel totally, uh, I mean, it's like reading a book. Uh, you're sitting down and reading a book, a good fiction book, and you're in a whole other world. Mm -hmm. And then you try to go back to your real world. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really hard to make that. And I, you know, there's been a lot of divorce situations in the legislature mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's hard to, to you know, which I could imagine being gone all week. Mm -hmm. It's just a different Tough. situation, sure. Is there anything I haven't asked you that would be important to include in this interview? I haven't had much time today to think about yeah. this interview. <laughs> Well, I hope politics is changing in the sense that people can feel like they can do what they feel compelled to do because it's right for them. Um, and I've had, you know, I've had to struggle with that for a long time. Partisan politics, we can't do away with, with uh, the two-party system. I understand that because you know, one party would be a dictatorship, three mm -hmm. parties would be chaos. I mean, if we thought we had a bad mm -hmm. nap, you had three parties would be mm -hmm. a real mess. But, you know, I really hope that, that people can see that the government is starting to work towards um, what's right, not because of who they are, but because of what they are, that, it, it, that it's Kansas and that we want to progress as a state. And yes, we have to represent our districts, but we also have to remember what's best for the state. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, That's great. Good conclusion. Thank you.
Okay, this is February 13th, and this is Representative Elaine Wells that I'm interviewing. That's okay. My first question is, what years have you served in the Kansas House of Representatives? I was elected in 1986, and then re-elected in 1988, and then re-elected in 1990. So, okay. this is my fifth year. Okay, and you've been in the House all, mm -hmm. all five years. Correct. Okay. Are you a Democrat or a Republican, and why? <laughs> well, this will probably be the most interesting answer that you get from any of us, I'm sure. Uh, I served the first four years as a Democrat, and then uh, re-registered at the end of uh, the 80 or the 90 session as a Republican to run on the Republican ticket. So, as far as I know, I haven't really researched it through the library, but I've been told uh, by many legislators that have been up here that that has never been done in the state before that someone elected from one party um, re-registered and got elected from another party. So as far as I know, it's a first in the state ever, man or woman. Mm -hmm. So I feel pretty proud of that, even though you know it's it was a close election. I think that was part of the problem. My reasons for changing basically came from um, when I registered as a Democrat years ago. Are you picking that up? Yeah, that's good. I mainly did so because um, my in-laws were Democrats and my parents had passed away and they were Republican and I, you know, came from a very Republican family, grandparents included, and uh, to keep peace in the family I registered as a Democrat because my in-laws were pretty, pretty politically uh, minded and never thought that it would have anything to do with my career life. Um, but once I got up here and uh, looked at the different issues and the different stands on the issues, I found that my philosophies were more in line with the Republican conservative um, background, responsible mm -hmm. government, you know, cut waste. Mm -hmm that type of thing. And many times I differed on my voting with the Democrats that I was serving with and mm -hmm. felt that I was getting some extreme pressure from leadership to go along with with what they wanted me to do. Um, I'll never forget somebody told me there was a, a speaker from Texas that said, you got to go along to get along. And I didn't like that motto. I, you know, feel very independent mm. and feel very much like I should represent the district mm -hmm. t um, rather than trying to represent a party. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that's interesting. That is an interesting answer. Mm -hmm. One of the more interesting answers mm -hmm. to that question, by the way. Um, before you were elected to office the first time, were you registered either way then? or, or I was registered as a Democrat. You were as a Democrat. Yeah. How long ago? Did well, you first register I, as a Democrat? My husband was in the service, and so we were in during the Nam era, and we were in California after we got married, and after that was mm -hmm. I was still in high school when we got married. And so when we came back from the service in 1973, that's when I registered to vote, and that that's when you that's when I first this. voted and and got involved in the political process at all. Okay. Uh, well, I want to ask you a few questions about your election to office the first time. Uh, you ran as a Democrat. Why did you run for office, and how far in advance did you plan to run, and how how was that decision made? My dietitian, or the dietitian at the the uh, place of employment that I worked, I was an administrator in a healthcare facility, and so our consulting dietitian is uh, she was Carol Niles, and her husband was Representative Irving Niles, who was up here for 20 years. And she had encouraged me to get involved in politics. Um, she felt like I, you know, after working together for 10 years, that I, you know, would do good at it. And so, um, with her encouragement and several other people, um, decided to throw my hat in the ring, as one of our residents in the nursing home said, and uh, worked really hard that first year. I didn't think I was going to win. And pretty much had told myself that this was not a not a futile effort, but the idea that I would get some name recognition and then come back in two years and run again. And much to my surprise and everybody else's, I won by 25 votes on election night. 25 and then, uh -huh. votes. Oh my goodness. And then on uh, uh, the recount. 
So I went through another a recount before, so oh, I had gone goodness. through that process. It's probably why I asked for a recount this time. If I had not gone mm -hmm. through that first recount, mm -hmm. I probably would not have thought that the numbers could be turned mm -hmm. around or changed. But in that recount, there was about 13 votes that were affected um, mm -hmm. in the different precincts. And so I knew this time losing by six on election night and then by 11, that there would be a chance in a million that I could get, you know, mm -hmm. could come out the winner. So and that's what happened. Well, tell us a little more about this election. <laughs> I think this was the most exciting one yeah. as far as that goes. Um, two weeks before the election, I, I felt pretty good about it. But then there was some mass mailings, negative campaign, campaigning and that type of thing that I felt really affected my, you know, chances. There was also a lot of anti-incumbency this year. Mm -hmm. I remember going door to door uh, in that in that time frame that people were really upset with Congress because of the budget situation. They were not getting the budget bill mm -hmm. out, and the president said that he was, you know, uh, I can't remember now the whole circumstances. But I remember going door to door, and they'd ask me, "Are you an incumbent?" And I'd have to say, <laughs> "Not in Congress." <laughs> they get mixed so, up. Yeah, they mm -hmm. sure do. Um, and I think there was a lot of anti-Republican sentiment mm -hmm. that was, you know, strong. And you had just... Just become just, one. <laughs> you, were, you, you were the bearer of the right. message as yes. a Republican, right. so that so would have affected you. I yeah. think with all of that happening, um, and the other thing was that our last names were very similar, and that came out in yeah. the judge's um, his, uh, memorandum to the select committee. It came out from both attorneys in the lawsuit that our last names were so familiar and we even had people that came and and told us that they had hoped they voted for me but they saw the last name um, oh and you know some of them said they had to look twice to make sure they marked the right box oh wow so that you know fate is really strange uh -huh. the way those things happen uh -huh. and you found out what about two weeks ago it been one week ago two two weeks, two weeks ago Friday. yeah so, yeah I'm sure uh, what was it like to not know all that time in December to... Uh, it was kind of like li living in limbo. Yeah, just, you you did take the oath and yeah, were sworn uh -huh. in the into sworn office, in. but you right. weren't allowed to vote on, on that, that issue. issue. You could Everything vote on else, I, yeah. Okay. Which I really felt we need to change some of those laws, and I've introduced mm -hmm. several bills to do some changing, but it was detrimental to the district to not really know who their representative mm -hmm. was. You know, mm -hmm. that people kept saying that that didn't hurt them, but I think it did. Mm -hmm. so. I think it's certainly. But I, like I feel be. now, though, that my influence is going to be very positive because I was told after the withdrawal of the challenge that um, I had at least ten Democrats who were supporting me, and it was going to become a battle oh, amongst wow. the Democrats, not a partisan battle. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. I had all the Republican support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting situation. Well, who encouraged you through all your elections? Who can you you have a small group, a large group, or one special oh, person? Fairly who? large group of campaigners, mm -hmm. um, supporters. And this year was really interesting. My tr my uh, treasurer, who is a Democrat, who's been active in the Democrat Party, remained my treasurer. I um, see. My, now this was from previous elections. Uh, uh -huh, one, yeah, one previous uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. it, he had he wasn't the. I had changed treasures in, in midterm mm -hmm. last time, so um, from one banker to another banker. <laughs> so, so that you know. But then, the chairman of the committee was uh, uh, the husband of the county clerk in our county, and um, that helped to have that mm -hmm. that name recognition mm -hmm. there too. Well, did the Republicans campaign hard for you? I had a lot of Republican support that the. the the ones I did not have were um, the gentleman that I beat it, that I defeated in '88, and then the gentleman I defeated in '86, and I they see. had somewhat of a following. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that there was there was some sentiment there that this lawsuit, which has cost the Republican Party, was really mm -hmm. the the brunt of this bitterness in in losing an election. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's interesting. Were there any organizations that supported you? Oh, yeah. That you had been a member of, for instance, or were uh, these 
people. I mean, in your first election, let's let's talk about that first. Well, I had the support from KNEA and from the Cape, or yeah, from Cape. I, in fact, I had a lot of Cape people campaign. I see. They took uh, flyers door to door mm -hmm. and that type of thing. Um, and then I had labor's support. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of. I didn't receive a lot of support from the PACs because you, not being an incumbent, mm -hmm. you don't seem to get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that, I don't, you know, I don't think that that really wins elections. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Well, how what, how did you finance your elections? You had PAC support, and did you? The first year, I spent about eight thousand dollars and raised about seven thousand, so a, a thousand came out of pocket. Mm -hmm. The second year, I spent about ten thousand. And raised about ninety five hundred, so five hundred mm -hmm. came out of pocket. This last election, I raised about twenty thousand and spent about twenty thousand. Ooh, so it was a, yeah. a lot more yeah. vigorous campaign. Right. Uh, how did you campaign? What what kind of campaigning are you? Mostly doing? door to door, um, radio ads. We have uh, newspapers, weekly newspaper in the area. Um, a lot of newspaper ads, um, parades, mm -hmm. um, the usual, <laughs> yeah, speaking engagements, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Did yeah. you do uh, any television advertising? No. Uh -uh. How did the media treat you? Did they endorse you at any point? Or? The Emporia Gazette endorsed me, and um, the Chronicle, our county Chronicle paper, does not do endorsements. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, the support of um, kind of behind the scenes or inactive support from the radio station manager mm -hmm. who's a Republican precinct committee. Mm -hmm. So did did anyone in your family or your husband's family or any relative precede you in uh, the legislature? No, mm -hmm. but I would I would say that Carol Niles had adopted me as her <laughs> You were an adopted daughter. <laughs> I was an adopted daughter of Carol and Irving. Oh, so that's that's, that's yeah. where see their son was a classmate of mine. I see. Oh, so, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, can you describe your district a little bit? And were you redistricted? Where you changed? Yes, and that hurt me this time. Okay. Um, the district is it was all of Osage County and the northern half of Lyon County. Oh. But it now is just the northern and this is, sounds crazy, but now it's the northern half of Osage and then and Emporia <laughs> or a part of Emporia a chunk of Emporia a fourth of Emporia actually so it Jerry you know it gerrymanders all the way down through um, and you think that will play to was a factor in the election it was a factor in the election because I lost uh, big time in down in Lyon County in the new mm. in the new part mm -hmm. What kind of issues were affecting and important to your district, or have been through the through the years that you were in the legislature? I'd say property taxes was a big mm -hmm. issue. Um, we have a Hallmarks plant in Osage City, and I think there were some people unhappy about the way you know taxes mm -hmm. were distributed. Um, economic development's been an, an issue as far as jobs, and and we are a commuter. A commuter district because we right rise. we have to work outside the county. Mm -hmm. um, so well, are those issues you focused on then mainly in? in um, what I focused on in my campaign was basically, um, <laughs> which kind of <laughs> kind of fell apart after <laughs> what happened on election night. It was basically being a part of leadership with the, the experience. That experience mm -hmm. is what counts. Mm -hmm. But that is true. I mean, I, I look at the freshmen, mm -hmm. you know, I was a freshman four mm -hmm. years ago, and I know I didn't know anything. And I look at the freshmen <laughs> this year, and I know they don't know anything. You know, they're trying mm -hmm. hard, but you don't learn it mm -hmm. the first year. It takes you a while. Mm -hmm. um, uh, any issues you work particularly hard on? Well, and that was part of the problem years? with my being a Democrat because I was having struggling with the Democrats on several issues. One of them was the insanity defense and we had two people that were killed in the district by someone who had alleged that they were insane and one young man that was killed in Carbondale or killed in Wichita. I lived, lived in Carbondale. His uh, murderer did get off on insanity and uh, 
So I worked very hard that first year and got a mm -hmm. bill through and, and had problems with the Democrats supporting it. In fact, mm -hmm. the next day it was actually killed on the floor oh, uh, yeah. because people had changed their mm -hmm. votes. Other issues were um, health insurance that they disagreed with me on mm -hmm. and um, attorney's fees on bad debts. Um, mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. were some concerns. Well, uh, are there any issues that you would say are identified now as women's issues? And did you support these or participate oh, in getting them passed? I or? think about any issue is a woman's issue. <laughs> and, you know, I'm all for equality, but I still believe that my husband's the head of the house. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, I think that women are discriminated against in many different ways still, from, from wages to, you know, even the voting process. Mm -hmm. A woman is the only one that has to go re-register because she changes her name. Mm -hmm. um, things like that that need to be addressed. I also am very strong, had not been strong, but, but have become more strong in, in the area of uh, abortion and, and the life movement. Mm -hmm. um, got involved in that last year when the parent notification bill was up and finally realized that I shouldn't compromise my convictions and, mm -hmm. and not take away a woman's right to choose, but to make it an educated choice. Mm -hmm. so. That's an interesting, interesting point. Well, if you were going to describe yourself, and everyone always tries to put labels on people, I'm not sure I agree with any of them, but if you were to describe yourself, could you call yourself a liberal or conservative or something else? or? How would you I describe would say it? I have very conservative views on spending mm -hmm. and um, liberal views on creativity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds safe to me. <laughs> okay, you were, we mentioned being a freshman legislator a minute ago. Uh, did you have a mentor when you were a freshman? Uh, Joan Adam was my mentor. Okay. Yeah. Besides the Niles, who, yeah. who really weren't yeah. in here. Well, Probably they helped you because yeah. they still knew a lot yeah. of My people. idol was always Nancy Caswell. Okay. No matter what, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. she always has been my idol. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, what committees did you serve on as a freshman in each each session? Well, I pretty much have stayed on the same, except for this year's mm -hmm. a few new ones. I got elections this year, which I won. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> um, agriculture and small business, pensions, mm -hmm. investments, and benefits, uh, insurance, public health and welfare. And I've been now, this is my third year as an intern on appropriations. Mm -hmm. Do you hold any leadership positions? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you uh, describe, well, since this is recent, can you describe the State House power structure? Now, this is really different for you because first you were a Democrat I've and they were a minority, and now you're a Republican <laughs> minority. <laughs> I've, yeah, and I've seen the leadership uh -huh. structure from uh -huh. both sides. Uh -huh. um, is there a difference? Are there differences? Oh, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how to play the game. Uh -huh. <laughs> so is everybody. It, it is different. It's, mm -hmm. And it's interesting. It's, um, and I really think if I had to, I mean, I always believe that things happen for a reason or a purpose or whatever. There's always a larger picture than what mm -hmm. we see. But I, last year, I knew that Jim Russell struggled after changing parties with, with the Democrats. I feel like this year that I'm not having to go through that struggle because they are in the majority. Mm -hmm. um, rather than being looked on as you bad person because mm -hmm. you did this to us, um, I'm more, I think, given sympathy that, look what you did. I mean, you did something and now you're really suffering. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think that going through that process, uh, you know, I'll have, I'll be able to regain the respect mm -hmm. that I want to have, mm -hmm. and that, and in doing it, also um, plowed through new territory. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody's ever done it before. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I've also also have had thoughts that I don't want to stay in the process either because it, it's had its toll. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, sure it emotionally has. and physically. Mm -hmm. so. uh, just for the record, could you kind of recount what happened on election night? It was very close. It was, it was very close. I, I led most of the night, but then as the Emporia numbers came in, I, I lost the lead. Lost by six votes on election night on Friday then with the, the what they called a canvas. Uh, we uh, had a 11 vote difference then. So then I asked for a recount, and that was done then the following Friday. 
-hmm. and it came out. It was, it was like going through major surgery. I would stand, I was here at the Capitol because <laughs> we had meetings, uh, interim meetings. And um, when the interim meeting was over at four, I, the recount was still going on. So I would pace and look out the window. It was like, it was, I remembered it was exactly like when my father was in heart surgery mm -hmm. and just pacing just and just waiting mm -hmm. and waiting. And then being told, you know, the, the, the good news. Um, that I won by two votes. <laughs> so, was it two votes that yeah. time? Oh yeah. my gosh. Then what happened? <clears throat> so, well, then they filed a, a uh, legal challenge, a lawsuit, See. and then that went to court, and that was the week before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we waited after that. We prepared for that, you know, like the week before that. Mm -hmm. So I was with the, the attorney. I lost four months of employment out of the whole mm -hmm. deal, and my husband says I've cost him twenty thousand dollars <laughs> because I lost ten thousand with not being employed, and uh -huh. and he had to take ten thousand out of the business to make up for my ten thousand. So he said, "You cost us twenty thousand." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> so you you came in when you were sworn in. What were, what was the situation exactly? You, the judge had decided that I won by five okay. instead of they. The, um, well, where did the, how did you get from two to five? Um, because the, okay, the, the, the recount showed two. Mm -hmm. The judge counted up, to, he, he showed it by five. And part of that oh. came from um, some ballots that did not, um, like absentee voter ballots that had not been mm -hmm. counted. A couple of ballots in bags that had not been counted but found and needed to be counted to make the the Goodness. balance of the count, things like that. But then when the select committee got a hold of it, so then it went to the select committee, and that was a week long. Okay, long what did the select committee is a group of legislators. Yeah, right? there was three um, Democrats and three Republicans, mm -hmm. and uh, they met and had, it was hearings, one hearing. Let me go back to the court. That was really interesting one day. We started at 9 o'clock in the morning and did not get out of there until, did not get out of the courtroom until after 10 o'clock at night. And no Good. attorney that I've ever talked to knows of any court lawsuit that you've been in over 12 hours. I mean, it was just draining. Um, and then the same. Okay, you talking about the court, the day in court. Yeah. The 12 hours. 12 hours. And then a committee hearing was also very lengthy. I, it started at, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and we didn't get out of here until about 10 o'clock that night. So it was like nine hours. No, well, I was thinking somewhere in the vicinity of nine-hour committee re meetings, so it was really the two. Uh, so then they found that I won by three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, and the, watching the politics of that was very, very mm -hmm. interesting. I, in some respects, I feel um, I get to observe some things or be a pro part of the process of things that nobody else ever has in the state. Mm -hmm. Being that I have been on both sides, mm -hmm. um, I know the thinking process now on both sides and, um, you know, even though I don't feel that I changed anything but, you know, the letter behind my mm -hmm. name because I've always been the same person mm -hmm. and that type of thing, I still feel that there's, um, I have a lot of Democrat values, a lot of Republican mm -hmm. values, and I'm just a Kansan to be mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way everybody should be. Yeah, so. well, that's interesting. Well, I was going to ask you if there were three or four things that you really remember very well, but I think this probably is... Yeah, this is the biggest... <laughs> it's taken such a precedent over everything else, it's hard to remember other things. Well, then you actually... Um, that, that committee met on a Friday, is that right? No, it met on a Thursday. When did this committee meet that you're talking about? The beginning? About? The, you mean the beginning the, of it? Yeah. Uh, oh, they met more than once. Oh, huh? yeah. They oh. met for a whole week. Okay. That's right. They met right. a whole week. It okay. was a week long. It was a week long process. And then on? Well, see, January 14th was the first day of session. Yeah. And it, it came up on um, the, the next week. It was... The week they had five days, five days after the, the judges, signed, yeah. and then ten days after they started the hearings. Okay. And they took every day. 
so it okay and then you actually didn't find out that she had withdrawn the until flat that friday that morning, friday morning. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really sad. so then the, the house was not going to have to decide that at right. the last minute right. found that out. are there any other incidents that you can uh, recall real vividly anything that's happened humorous uh, big memories of being in the house hmm. well there's a lot of memories and there's you know um, the camaraderie of, of a I'll never forget the speaker Braden when we first met orientation said that you will begin to feel like this is a one big fraternity sorority place I mean that, that's the type of friendships you develop mm -hmm. is that and that that's very true mm -hmm. I mean even through my changing parties um, like George T. Barton has always remained a very good close friend. Mm -hmm. he, he was like a big brother when I first came mm -hmm. up here because we had basically the same backgrounds mm -hmm. of districts and that type of thing. And he's, you know, he's remained a friend and a lot mm -hmm. of people have. Um, there's a lot of, you know, you hold some, some, um, I want to say grudges to some degree, but most of the time you try to disagree on the, the issues and, mm -hmm. and let, you know, let them fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. I think I have been donned the name of the Osage Orange um, <laughs> and that was given to me by Representative Sobach who fought real hard on the committee to not let me come back. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Irving Niles had the, the uh, he was uh, given the name of the Sage from Osage mm -hmm. and it was even put in the journal and I'm going to mm -hmm. be doing that in a, in a uh, resolution. But uh, so being called the Osage Orange for the reason that the Osage Orange is the um, um, hedge balls, mm -hmm. hedge trees mm -hmm. that are real strong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sturdy, long lasting, and long live a long time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Have a lot of uses. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, did you ever participate in any formal or informal coalitions like the the women's coalition that uh, sort of formed last year? Yeah. For a short time, mm -hmm. you participated. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I was considered a steel magnolia. Okay. I I just, you know, it, just wondered if you did participate in with one of the issues. How many women uh, were in the house when you first came in? You, it was 25%. I don't mm -hmm. know what the exact it's number is. And it's like 30-something mm -hmm. percent, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Okay, I want to ask you a few questions about yourself personally real quick here. Are you a native of Kansas? Were you born yes. here? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about your uh, growing up and your uh, family? I've got some people, Lady Barbara, do you? Okay.